Hello everyone! My name is Rebecca Simons and welcome to the Educate Community's very first make and take on how to create custom Google Classroom banners. A make and take session is a fun way for you to learn about new tech tools while creating a product you can take back to use in your classroom. Not only are you going to walk away with your product, but you'll also have access to all the designs created by the Educate community. After you've watched this tutorial, we would love for you to come design a banner in the Educate community slide deck. If you registered for the Make and Take course, you should have received a link to the slide deck in your email. Click the plus icon to add a new slide and design your banner. Then add your name, school district, and social media handle if you have one in the speaker box for your slide. Finally, you'll download your banner to use in your own Google Classroom. You're welcome to download any banners that have been created by Kate or other participants. All we ask is that you give the creator credit and possibly even give them a shout out on social media. We would also love for you to tag us at MSU Kate on Twitter and Instagram or at Kate Murray State on Facebook so we can celebrate your EdTech creations as well. Let's get started. You have a lot of options when it comes to digital design. There's Canva, Adobe Express, even Google Drawings, but today we're going to be using Google Slides. I chose to use Slides today because it's one of my favorite Google tools and it's the one I use most frequently in my own classroom. To get started, we want to create a new slide deck by typing in slides.new into the Omni box. Once your deck has been created, click on File, Page Setup. Click the drop down arrow and select custom. Then set your unit of measurements to pixels. We're going to change our canvas size to 1600 by 400. Next, I'm going to name my file Google Classroom Banners. Instead of creating a new deck each time I want to design a new banner, I'll simply come back to this file and add a new page. That way all my banners can be found in one location. Now that we've adjusted our canvas size and named our file, step one in the design process is to select our background color. Background color is set by clicking background on the toolbar. You'll have several different options here. You can use a solid color, a gradient, or an image. When I'm trying to decide on a color scheme for my header, I like to go to coolers.co. And we could easily go down a rabbit hole here because there are so many fun options, but let me show you a couple. I like to go to the tool menu and click on Explore Palettes. When you click in the search field, it allows you to filter by color, style, and topics. They also have a great gradient section as well. When you find a color or color scheme you like, simply click on the color and it will copy the hex code to your clipboard. You can then go back over to Slides, click Background, Color, and add a custom color. I'm going to paste the hex code in and click OK to apply my background color. The same process applies if you're changing a font color, the color of a shape, etc. To add a gradient, click on the gradient tab under background. You can use one of slides preset gradients or you can create your own by clicking the plus under custom. To add colors for your gradient, begin by clicking on the square on the left. Then click the color drop down. You can select from colors already here or copy and paste a hex code in like I showed you earlier. To add a second color, click on the square on the right. Now, if I want a gradient with more than two colors, I can add a gradient stop. Click on the circle and add your third color. I can then drag the gradient stop to adjust how my colors blend together. Finally, you can change the direction of your gradient through type and angle. You can also use an image as your background. You have the option to bring images in from various locations. You can even search Google for an image from here. Fall is right around the corner, so I want fall leaves as my background. Click the image you want and insert. Now, sometimes when you use an image as a background, it can stretch the proportions to where it looks a little strange, as you can see here in my example. So instead of adding image as a background, 
I'm going to demonstrate an alternative method by adding the image through the Insert menu. To do this, I'm going to click on Insert, Image, Search the Web. Let's use the same image I used before. Now you'll notice my image doesn't take up the entire canvas. So first I'm going to line the image up with the left side of the canvas. Then I'm going to click the corner handle to enlarge the image proportionally until I reach the right hand side of the canvas. Now that my image covers the entire canvas, I'm going to double click on the image so I can crop it down to the canvas size. To do this, I'm going to grab the black line and drag it up until it's even with my ruler on the left. The ruler shows you where the canvas starts and ends. Then I can double click or hit enter to apply. If you don't have a ruler, you can turn it on by going to view, show ruler. Once I've set my crop mask, I can then double click on the image and drag it around until I'm happy with the section of leaves that are showing. Insert images is a great way to add extras to your banner. For example, if I wanted to create a Bitmoji classroom, I could add furniture to my classroom through insert images. Adding the word transparent to your search will help you narrow your search to images with transparent backgrounds. Let's look at an example. I'm going to search for transparent couch. I like this one, so I'm going to insert it. You'll see that there's no white background around the couch. You can just see my background color. If you find an image you love, like this one right here, that doesn't already have a transparent background, you can use remove.bg. All I have to do is upload my image and it will automatically remove the background. I can then download my new image with a transparent background. The best part is you don't even have to have an account to use this. Here's the difference in my images now. You can also crop images into a shape. Let's say I wanted to make my own pennant string for my header. I want my pennants to have a fall pattern to them. So I'm going to search for fall patterns under images, insert one. Then I'm going to click the drop down arrow next to the crop icon and select a pennant shape. I can then tinker with the shape until it's just the way I want it. You'll see that my rope is showing up on top of my pennant. I want my pennant to appear on top, so I'm going to Select my pennant, right click, order, bring to front. I can then use the blue circle to adjust the angle of my pennant and position it where I'm happy with it. Now let's say I wanna use a couple different patterns. Click on your existing pennant and press Control D or Command D to duplicate. Then click on replace image, search from web. I can then search for fall patterns again and select a new pattern. Now let's add some text to our banner. I'm going to use the insert menu to add a text box. I can then use the formatting menu to change the text font, the size, and the color. There are wonderful people out there who have gone through and looked at what the cute fonts are that are available on Google. A quick Google search will come up with several lists. Now, there are font styles available in slides that you may not be able to currently see. To add more fonts, simply click on more fonts and check the font that you want to add. You can also add a text outline using WordArt. To add an outline, click Insert WordArt type in your text and hit enter to save. Next, I'm going to set my formatting to the same style as my text box. My text was Engelbert and bold. Then I'm going to set my fill color, which is the paint bucket icon. I'm going to set the fill to transparent and beef up the size of my border. If I wanted to change the outline color or border color, I could do so here. I'm then going to use the blue squares to adjust the size of my outline. If you want your outline to line up with the text perfectly, I would only use WordArt and skip the text box step. Instead of a transparent fill, you would set your fill color to whatever color you wanted to use for your text. 
Since I want my outline slightly off center from the text, I used a combination of word art and text box. Now that I'm happy with my word art, I can add any finishing touches. For example, I might want to add a pumpkin. From a design standpoint, it's important to remember that Google Classroom displays the course name and details in the bottom left corner, so you might want to avoid placing text or images here. Once you're happy with your banner, the final step is to download from Slides and upload to Google Classroom. Click on the slide you want to download, then click on File, Download, PNG, or JPEG. Head over to Google Classroom and click the Customize button in the upper right corner of the Stream banner. Click Upload Photo, then select your photo from your computer. You'll need to adjust the region of the banner that will show in your classroom. I drag the handles to capture the entire image. As an added bonus, this image size will also work for banners in Google Forms. Thank you so much for joining our Make and Take today. Don't forget to head over to the Educate Community slide deck and create your own banner. We can't wait to see your designs.